Hey everybody, uh, so we're going to continue the second session of the practice test for the MCAS release. So this can be found on the DESE website, uh, but if you just click on the video description, I have a link that goes to the digital version of this, which you should be already have tried. And there's also a PDF you can download and print up, <clears throat> which is what we're working on here. So the idea is that you try the problem on your own digitally using the format they have on the computer and then go back have a written copy and you can take the notes. So that's that's the purpose of this. So anyway, we're going to spend a little bit of time in this video just talking about this one problem because it's a four-parter. Uh, it's all about trigonometry. So let's take a look. So it tells us there's four parts. Consider the triangle EFG. They show us a triangle here. They give us theta. Okay. This is going to be trigonometry. <clears throat> now one thing you should, you should uh, definitely take a look at is if you haven't done so already, I really hope you have at this point, is if you're looking at the digital version of this, there should be a little tab on the right that says Exhibits. If you click on that, it'll give you the reference guide, right? And they have added, um, they have added trigonometric ratios to that, right, under, right underneath the right triangles. They give a Pythagorean theorem and they give you trigonometric ratios. That was not on the previous uh, reference reference sheet back in the original version of the MCAS. So, and that does matter with this. That does matter with this problem. Okay. Okay, so the first part's asking is what is sine of theta in terms of the sides of triangle EFG? So theta is here, sine of theta is here, right? So uh, before anything, you know, you want to be using your scrap paper for this problem, okay? So I always like to write the, the acronym that helps us remember our trigonometric ratios is SOHCAHTOA. And I know you wouldn't need this necessarily because the reference guide has this, but it, ha it writes a little differently. So, okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse remember that right so this is our theta so this is our our opposite and this is our hypotenuse so sine of this would be opposite over hypotenuse so fg over eg so it'd be option b okay so as long as you know your trigonometric ratios you should have no problem getting the first part done <clears throat> excuse me okay explain the relationship between sine of theta and cosine of angle g so let's say we're talking about angle g I'm actually going to cross these out. Oop. Let me cross these out for a second. So it's not as confusing. So we're talking about this one now. I'm going to do a different, we'll do two arcs so it doesn't look like the other one. So cosine of G. All right. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is the adjacent. And this is the hypotenuse. So cosine of G is going to be uh, FG, because that's our adjacent, over hypotenuse, which is EG. And the sine of theta is, as we remember, is Fg over Eg. So what's their relationship? They're the same thing. You would simply just say they are equivalent. If you wanted to, you could write this out. You could say cosine of G equals Fg over Eg, or sine of theta equals Fg over Eg. It would be plenty to say they are equivalent ratios. That, that would be plenty. And your explanation, you could say cosine of theta and sine, sorry, cosine of G and then sine of theta are same thing. If you want to, you could write this out. So those are the first two parts. <clears throat> not too bad, right? The first two parts are not too bad. Let's take a look at the third part. <clears throat> now this one is a little tricky to explain, but I think if you have a good understanding of special right triangles, it's not that bad. All right, so let's go ahead and read this. If sine of th 30 degrees is one half and cosine of theta is one half, what is the value of theta in degrees? show or explain how you got your answer, okay? So we're trying to find a value of theta, right? <clears throat> so let's go ahead and I'm going to draw a triangle. Well, first I'm actually going to write this. I'm going to write sine of theta, sorry, sine of 30 degrees is one half, okay? And then cosine of theta equals one half. What is this? What's theta going to be? So I'm going to draw a triangle, okay? I'm going to draw a right triangle because we're using trigonometry. It has to be a right triangle, okay? Now this is going to be our 30 degrees, right? There's our 30, right? And if this is 30, this is 90, well, this has to be 60. So we're talking about a special right triangle here, right? Let me zoom in a little more so you can see a little better. It's a little, a little, a little small, okay? So, okay. So, um... Let's remember this. So the side that's opposite the 30 is x. The hypotenuse would be 2x 
and the side opposite the, uh, the 60 degrees would be x radical 3. Right? So that works. Okay. All right. So sine of 30 degrees is going to be, uh, sorry, actually, I'm going to write up here so I don't have to look back and forth. So Socatella. There we go. All right, so sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's why I'm going to zoom in. You can't see everything. <laughs> okay, so that's our trigonometric ratio. Well, yeah, that makes sense because it's a special right triangle, x over 2x. So this is our opposite, right? It's our opposite from 30, and this is our hypotenuse. So yeah, this is 1 to 2 ratio. Okay, fair enough. If cosine of theta is 1 half, so a cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So let me draw a triangle here. Okay. And this is going to be our theta. Okay. So our adjacent would be here, and our hypotenuse is here. Okay. And it's 1 to 2. So this is x, and this is 2x. All right. Well, what does this look like to you? This looks like a special right triangle, doesn't it? We're just missing this side, right? And we know if we have two sides of a right triangle, the third side has to be the same proportion, right? So because of the Pythagorean theorem. So this would have to be x radical 3. So we're talking about a special right triangle, only we're talking about a different angle. We're talking about the one that is where the 2x and the x meet, which is actually 60 degrees, right? So theta has to be 60 degrees. Okay, so it's, it's, it's interesting, because if you know that, okay, we're talking about cosine of something equals one-half, well, you can actually figure that out just by literally drawing a special right triangle and seeing it right then and there. So theta would be 60 degrees, okay? Uh, again, it requires a fairly good understanding of special right triangles and trigonometry. So, all right, let's look at the fourth part. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Mm. There you go. Complete the equation that represents cosine of g in terms of theta. Enter your answer in the space provided. Enter only your answer. Okay, so let's think about this. We actually have to go back to our triangle, our original triangle. So let me go ahead and redraw that. Yeah. So because when you take this on the digital, you actually see it all at once. So it's not going to be drawn to scale. Sorry. So E F G. So E, F, G, that's our 90 degree angle, that's our theta. And we're looking for this in terms of theta, right? How can we write that out? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, all right. So we know, that, we know that these two angles are supplementary, right? Sorry, not supplementary, they're complementary, rather. They have to add up to 90 degrees because it's a special right triangle, or it's a right triangle, rather. Um, we have the 90 degrees, and we know that these two angles, these other ones, have to add up to 90. So this is how easy this is. This is actually a really, really simple problem. So um, cosine of g, right? We need, to know what, we need to know what angle g is, but in terms of theta, right? So it would literally just be 90, right, minus theta. Because this and this have to add up to 90, right? So we need to know what this is. Well, we, only, we don't know what this is, but we know it's called theta. So 90 minus theta would equal angle G, okay? So it would simply be 90 minus theta, which would go right here. And that's it. So that's it for number, no, what is this, number 11, I think we just did? Yeah, number 11. So let's do a quick recap. So the first part... You can tell, uh, I actually think the third part is the hardest part of this problem. Uh, so this one, you just really need to know trigonometric ratios. It's really that straightforward. Here, you need to know how to find the cosine of something, and you just compare it. I don't think these two parts are all that complicated if you have a good, whole, if you have a good understanding of trigonometry. This one requires a little bit of thinking, and I think when you draw it out, it actually makes it way easier. Trying to do any of this on this problem without using scrap paper is a terrible idea, so make sure you're using scrap paper. This problem, if you draw, if you sketch the picture out, it should become apparent that, hey, this has to be the 60 degrees, right? Once you have the x and the 2x and, and a special right triangle, you kind of know what's up, or you should know what's up. 
And then the last part is really just simple algebra, honestly. So I don't think this one's all that complicated, but part C can be tricky. All right? Let me know if you have any questions, guys. Thanks.